I'm now outside the Royal Exchange where the second proclamation was held at midday as King Charles III was very much proclaimed to the people here. I mean, it's a, an extraordinary setting. It's, uh, the monarch has been proclaimed here very much in the heart of the city here since 1901, since Edward VII. It's a, a tradition that has gone on for a long time to very much. It is a proclamation to people in the city, which is a, a sort of separate entity, really, to sort of greater London to the people here. And I'd say it was an extraordinary ordinary ceremony. We had the, the Lord Mayor do a, a three cheers and then uh, God Save the King was, was played out and it really was quite extraordinary for everybody who was very much packed out in the streets to hear the proclamation and see the service unfold. And I'm drawing by one person who, who was here in the crowd. So you just introduce yourself and say why you came down? So I'm Anthony Osimich and I'm originally from Australia though I've spent more than half my life here in Britain and the monarchy has been a great source of of stability and continuity for me and for my family and, and for my, my two countries and so it was very important for me to, to be here to witness the proclamation of the new king. And now what did you make of it because I have to say I, I, it wasn't something I was familiar with obviously it's not something I've ever witnessed in my lifetime and it seemed like something in a wonderful way from a bygone age you know the, whether it was the, the clothes that people were wearing the, the tradition the, the trumpets I mean that's what it kind of came across to me that it was from a, a bygone age but in some ways felt completely timeless. Indeed, I mean the English monarchy has, has been with us for, for over a thousand years and it's brought us into the modern age and these uh, uniforms and these words, these ceremonies may seem from a bygone age but they are very much cherished, especially here in the, the City of London. Uh, I used to work in the City of London, I really love the, the history and the continuity that brings to our, our age. Because it, some people might be a bit surprised, like why, why was that happening here in the city? But it's, that's part of an important tradition, isn't it? Is that something I, I was speaking when I was speaking to actually one of the older men earlier, and I was asking sort of what, why exactly does it take place in the city? We said, well, it goes back for hundreds of years, really, where people would sort of stand and proclaim important notices in, in town squares across the United Kingdom. And of course, in London, the city is very much the heart of it. Well, indeed. I mean, there are very strong connections between royalty uh, and the city of London. London and, and the military. We saw here today the, the band of the Grenadier Guards, we saw the pike and drums of the Honourable Artillery Company and, and these are also institutions which are very much with us uh, today. The importance of the City of London to our uh, domestic economy and the world economy and the military for our, for our protection. So I think we all should feel a very strong personal connection and feel very proud of what we have witnessed here today, although at this sad time of the passing of uh, the late uh, Queen uh, Elizabeth II. Well, Anthony, thank you so much for speaking to us. Really, really appreciate it. So that is the, the second and final proclamation that will be happening here in London. But we will be having further proclamations in Northern Ireland, Wales and Scotland that are taking place tomorrow.